Hello, everyone, and welcome um, to episode 88 of Podchat Live. And this is uh, like a little extra bonus one that Craig and I were really excited about and really looking forward to doing. Um, because 2020 has been a bit of a bit of a different year for most of us. But the one thing that uh, people who are into running shoes will, will appreciate is it's been a kind of cool year for running shoes. Um, Craig and I are also massive fans of the Doctors of Running, and we're going to link to their blogs and their YouTube channels and their podcasts in the in the notes below. And we are going to be joined by the whole the whole team. Uh, right now, we've got just two thirds because um, Matt is running late, which I believe he always does. Right. Um, uh, so we've got we've got Nathan and David, uh, two thirds of Doctors of Running. Matt will be joining us as soon as he can, and we're just gonna we're just gonna talk shoes. There's going to be an awful lot of um, awful lot of opinion, uh, which is okay if you're watching and you've got sort of strong opinions about. Uh, what you think the best shoe is, or, or perhaps um, you don't, you disagree with one, one something that one of us have said, then then fire them in the comments. It's all it's all good fun, um, and we're going to go through what we think some of the, the the kind of most exciting releases of 2020 have been, and then we're going to I'm going to fire some kind of uh, like a rapid fire questions at uh, at Matt, David, and Nathan, and just just get their take on kind of what they really like, what they don't like, and maybe we'll even have a little look forward to 2021 as well. So, uh, first of all, Matt. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Nathan, David, thank you so much for joining us. And Matt, when he comes, um, we're big fans, as you know, um, and we're looking forward to talking shoes with you guys because uh, I don't know anyone who's bigger nerds than you, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad to be here. This is uh, this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm getting moaned at at home for having too many shoes, which is a, a conversation I know we all get at home, I'm sure. Um, to, to to appease my wife, I just show her the Instagram account of one of you boys, and <laughs> she normally realizes that that she's not doing too badly. So I have to thank you guys, thank you guys for that. Um, well, my wife, my wife is always. She said I used to be excited when packages showed up at the door, but now I just know it's going to be shoes for you, <laughs> yeah. so I don't even go get them. <laughs> yeah. um, so I've just I've just uh, assimilated. A, a list and it's, it's a personal sort of uh, opinion list really of uh, what i think are some of the shoes that are worthy of talking about um so we'll, we'll just we'll just run through some of those first and foremost and uh, as we go along we'll just see where the conversation takes there's no plan no script we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll just go for it so the one i wanted to start with just because it's closest to my left foot are these guys oh, yeah. um just because I think, uh, you know, when we think about what the shoe is and how it's, how, how it's built, and, and I'll let you guys talk a bit more about that. And we also think about the the, the model that they've approached the marketplace with. Um, I think we can all agree, you know, we, we're we always interested and excited to see something new, um, but we don't uh, necessarily always see new things. And when these guys came along, I feel like it was it felt really, really new. So. David, you're holding you're holding yours up. So um, we'll talk a minute, bit in a minute about what they like to run in, how much fun they are. But can you just tell everyone a bit about this shoe who maybe not isn't too familiar with it? You know what um, what what's their what's their philosophy as a company? Yeah. So from my understanding of Treyu, I mean they're a startup from Austin, Texas, um, in this year of 2020, and their aim is to basically make the first subscription based. Uh, running shoe that's affordable for people to train in and have a lot of versatility in, so to train and race in as well. And so their approach, from my understanding, has been to take a very minimalist approach at it and have basically a single layer of EVA, um, very light upper, and just a rubberized EVA out. So something that they can reproduce and, and create relatively easily, but still create a solid ride and something that's very fun to run in. And I don't have the specs in front of me, but I, I want to say it's in the six ounce range. I think it's like six and a half, six point six or something. But um, yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, it's a shoe for the road. It's not something you're really going to be taking off roading too too much, but but it's fun to get the legs going on it. And it reminds me a lot of like the Skechers Razor Three. Um, sure. I think they're both lightweight <laughs> tile options. And you'll see too, just from I haven't actually ran in them at all, but you'll see, you know, if you follow them on their media at all, they're they value transparency in their production stuff. They're showing they're showing stuff that's coming down the pipeline that is going to be changed a lot, just trying to keep people in the loop with with what's going on. And I think uh, Michael, the the founder, kind of has talked about how he he doesn't want a shoe that's you're gonna fall in love with and then they're gonna change it. It sounds like they want something that is you find your shoe and we're gonna keep it there for you um so that you don't lose what you love yeah okay. I've got, can, I, can i just make oh, a comment how do you think the subscription model is going it's 50 something dollars if i understand how do you think that's going i want to say it's 55 yeah 55. from what it looks like it's going well because i think they have a wait list yeah i mean <laughs> every time they do an instagram post it seems like they've just got like 
hop yeah. on the train now type of mentality. They seem to be sort of upscaling it really, really sensibly in that rather than saying, right, we've got a uh, hundred thousand subscriptions, they're, they're releasing a load, waiting till they sell out, producing, <clears> you know, at the factory based on those numbers and then releasing another load. I, I got in on the first batch. So from the UK, Craig, the subscription, once mm. you pay the taxes and the shipping is $90. Uh, but the mm. great thing is sort of the first pair came and then a couple of uh, two months later, the second pair came. And then after that, I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, the third pair, let's, I, my wife said, oh, I quite like these. So I went on, I changed the colorway, changed the size. You don't have to just get one color in one size. You, you could essentially give your friends a pair of shoes every, every two months, three months. So it's a really interesting mm. model. And the one thing I say about them as a company, I don't know if you guys have had any um, sort of email dealings with them or communication with the company. They are incredible. I have never had an email that has taken longer, for, longer than an hour for them to reply to. No wow. matter what time of day. So, I wow. mean, that's a massive, massive plus. So, yeah, uh, I, I'm really excited about this company. I know that yeah. Nathan, you're probably just referring to their um, their carbon racer that they're bringing out in, I think, Q1 or Q2, aren't they, of 21. Yeah. Um, that's, su that's super exciting. Sorry, Craig, go on. Yeah. I was just going to say, something Nathan said, it reminded me of a, a, a now defunct running shoe company, and I apologise if I got it wrong, it might have been the Vitruvian brand many years ago. I've been around long enough to know the, his the history. This was a brand that came out and promised not to change its shoe from year to year, mm -hmm. and they went out of business. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it didn't. It, now it, it could have been from multiple reasons, but that was the key selling point. And I'm mm -hmm. talking thirty to forty years ago. Like this was quite some time ago. Um, I think it was the Vitruvian brand. I have to. I have to go and look it up. But it, it was interesting. Just uh, we just have had a. We just had a comment that's not unexpected about the shoes from um, Kevin Kirby and and it was the, <laughs> yeah and David can you hold the shoe up again David just to show yeah, what Kevin is referring to yeah. Have, yeah. let me let me just bring it up so everyone can see it yeah that, the strike here bit in the midfoot so look I don't know whether you want to make a comment on that or not <laughs> I mean you, yeah you, you don't have to Kevin it's not an order um, <laughs> <laughs> but, it's but kind of like. <laughs> I do get, I do get that. When I first saw that, I, I, you know what I did quite like on the inside when they they gave a bit of spec about oh, yeah. um, about the uh, you know it's a it's a, it's drop or it's offset and you know what what I, I quite like that. Yeah. I would agree that 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 um, I can I can see why that upsets people or rubs people up the wrong way. But I I I, I have so much fun running in this shoe that I I personally can let that one go. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. And I was nervous about this for you know because it is very lightweight and I I'm I'm a fan of cushioning as we're going to come on to talk about. I'm a fan of big stacks. I like soft compliant foams. And I was like, oh, I'm, I think this is going to end up um you know a casual day trainer perhaps rather than mm. a, sh a shoe to run in. Um, but that wasn't the case, which was really really interesting to me i was i was i thought this is going to feel like a um, dare we use the word barefoot shoe but it, but it didn't feel like that to me at all hmm. how how many miles are you getting on a on a pair that and you feel you like bet, it's still going well david you could ask that you do a lot more miles than me david you've probably gone through it <laughs> i run in a lot more pairs of shoes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I mean i only have think? 45 i think so I, I haven't really taken it through crazy mileage yeah, I'm just thinking. I've I've probably put maybe seventy k on this. That's all, and, and you, okay. it's just, there's just barely anywhere at all. Yeah. Um, obviously, I can see the dusty, uh, nice, beautiful sort of Californian um, trails that David runs on compared to the wet roads, <laughs> the wet roads of England. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. People are worried about the durability. I, I'm a bit. I'm the same. I've not put enough miles on it yet to know for sure. But like I say, I've got a brand new pair, and my wife's right. got a pair. They're arriving quicker than I can get through them. Put it that way. <laughs> that's that's um, a good thing. Which is a good a good sign. Yeah. Cool. Right. Do we want? Is anyone want to say anything else about a tray, or should we move on to the next? Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Perfect. Hey, oh, there is. he's alive. <laughs> I am alive. Thank you guys for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt. How you doing? How you doing? Like, thanks for I'm, joining us. I'm doing great. How is everybody? Not really to interrupt. Good. Don't interrupt any any Atreyu stuff. Uh, Kevin Kirby had some great comments there on the that I was watching on the Facebook well, feed. This is perfect timing because we were just all kind of wrapping up what we had to say about it. But let's just get your take on it before we move on. What is there anything um, anything you want to say about this shoe? How much you like it? Uh, the company, the ethos, the the shoe itself. So the from a a marketing and company standpoint, I like the company. I like the concept of having something simple when it seems like we're frequently getting way too complicated. We're throwing a million things in shoes. And I'm not saying this from a, a minimalist standpoint, or you do have to recognize that I have that bias, 
but it's nice to see something that's a little simple that's cost effective and is doing like marketing and thing and like footwear sales differently. I think that's interesting. I did see that comment. The thing that I'm probably not the biggest fan of, of going that, that classic older, like, Oh, you have to land a certain place here. That's, that's a turnoff. I'm sorry. From a, from a biomechanic standpoint, <laughs> that's, that is a turnoff. I'm with you. Yeah. 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 We will like, agree we're going to land. Million. Maybe we should get together and, and email Michael and just give him some, some feedback on it. Maybe he'll rub yeah. it off the next model. Uh, but then maybe he, he Equally, there may well be people that like it. Hopefully, there aren't people that yeah. are desperately trying to to uh, to achieve it uh, at the cost yeah. of, of other things. But you never know. Yeah. People are weird. People are weird, right? Um, perfect. So, next shoe. Where should we go? Sorry, quick, quick. We go? One more question. One more question. Does it run narrow or wide? You know, I'd probably say for as low profile of a shoe as it is, I would say it probably runs on the wider end, at least through the midfoot and in the toe box. Uh, Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's true to size for me, but it's definitely wide in the toe box. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. It sounds like we've it sounds like we may have convinced Kevin to buy a pair here. I, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, if you uh, if you let me, I was going to say for one of my if you let me know your size, I'll give my next subscription. I'll give I'll give them to you, and then you can tell me how they feel. So next there up, go. let's let's go. I feel like this shoe uh caused quite a bit of a buzz quarter one of this year because of uh some of the marketing um and and the way the marketing was interpreted and that is the uh... infinity react from nike it feels like it deserves a mention um because of, you know when this one hit the market as, as we know the marketing um all the way the marketing was interpreted and the social media comments thereafter were essentially that this is going to be the shoe that this is the this is the the holy grail this is the shoe that's going to reduce injury by 52 percent no less which is you know rather rather seductive for all of us um so nathan uh you, have you you know i'm assuming you guys have all run in this i'm pretty certain i've seen i've seen it on your blog have you all got just a just okay. matt. Um, just yeah. matt yeah come on matt you got to sort your staff out here you got to get the, you got to hook, <laughs> gotta hook you got to hook them up let's go <laughs> okay let's come to I, Matt then. i try they have shoes that randomly show up at their door and they're like where did this come from but <laughs> it's true <laughs> also. um so talk to me about your experience with uh we'll talk perhaps we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the claims uh shortly but let's talk about the sh this is more about the shoes and the experience mm -hmm. and you know being runners more more than anything tonight so talk to me about your experience as a runner putting on the infinity react and running in it and what it was like for you I, 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 before we do this, I'd love to hear Nathan and David's take on what they, having not run in it, I want to hear what you guys think when you hear a shoe is going to decrease injury rates by 50 plus percent. <laughs> I call baloney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I pretty mean, that's a pretty bold claim, right? 50% is pretty dang high by any statistical margin. So if they're going to go and say that, that's, if it does, then that's phenomenal, but I, I just don't. Yeah. Just from a number can standpoint. I, can, I a, can I just make a comment on that? I mean, we've 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 seen the abstract of the research that they base that on. Nike have a big legal department. They're not going to make claims unless they are pretty confident in them. The, the concern I now have is that it still hasn't been published in a peer-reviewed journal, and it's been a while now. I know the publication process takes time, but we only have the abstract and we've had that for what almost a, over a year now or yeah we got it in january um, we got it in january january mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it, it's so it either it hasn't been submitted for publication or there's an issue with getting it published or something i i, I just find it a bit concerning it's getting onto a year and we 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 haven't seen the data and when you look at how quick the the COVID vaccine RCTs have been published in peer-reviewed <laughs> journals. Um, yeah, so it is a bit concerning. We haven't got the actual anything more than the abstract. I, I think it's re I think it's reasonable for us to say uh, to any non-clinicians and just runners watching that you you shouldn't strike in an exact place in the atreo and you probably shouldn't expect fifty-two percent reduction in your personal injuries if you put an infinity react on. I think that's probably fair, isn't it? Um, but what 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 does this Infinity React feel like on on your foot map? Because I've got some fairly specific um, comments about it myself. I just wonder what yours are first, though. I I hated it. It was one of the most issues <laughs> <laughs> I've ever put on my feet, and I I spent additional money to get it early, and I never 
reviewed it because it was so bad that I just went, I, you know, I thought maybe I should give it some time and then end up just everything got kind of out of control and ever I ended up giving them away. It was a very, uh, to me, it was an uncomfortable shoot. It was, it was, it was a cool concept to see Nike start integrating some things like a rockered sole, um, potentially a some different ways of doing stability. But it certainly, for me, it was not a stable shoe whatsoever. And we know that just because you label something as stability or it might have a stability component does not make it a stability shoe whatsoever. There are plenty of stability shoes that that are incredibly unstable that I would not put anybody with with. A true stability need. I'm not saying arch support. I'm saying if you need a little bit for for some time, I would never put them in that kind of shoe. I think for the person that wants a little more simple shoe, wants to be able to wear the Nike logo, likes that soft react foam, which I I it's too unstable for me, and they want a rocker shoe. I think it does very well, but I found it to be a very in unsecure upper like there was no last lace hook it was i was very flimsy on my foot i felt like i was moving around i felt like i had to work really hard even to run easy an easy patient's shoe so i was not a fan i, yeah. I don't know if it's because people were, if they couldn't run as much so they therefore they decreased their injury risk because their mileage is lower That's <laughs> it. yeah um, but i i just did not for me personally i know a lot of people that love the shoe it did not work for my mechanics it not did not work for somebody who's like i need you know, I can run in, in stable neutral shoes and do very well. I can run in my pr pr preference is some mild stability, like mild. And that was a, this is an unstable shoe and very uncomfortable for me personally. And uh, that is even before I got my hands on the abstract and started looking at that. And that was honestly probably, so correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure that I'm reading the right thing. I was quite disappointed in the abstract. As somebody who's going through a PhD program right now, learning how to learn and learning how to research, Comparing a quote unquote neutral shoe to a stiff, rigid, and borderline uncomfortable stability shoe, which is what the Nike structure previously was, I know very few people that like that shoe. To have a group of runners with classified, which again, we can get into the discussion on that, a classified neutral mechanics and put them in a stability shoe, which may not be appropriate for them, and put them in a shoe that probably fits them better, and then have them run together. And that's the only two comparisons. I don't feel like that's valid at all to make a claim that, yeah, th th we reduced it 50% injuries. Yeah, you reduced it 50% compared to some other shoe that's probably not appropriate for them. But that you can't make that conclusion. You can't be like, this shoe decreases injuries by 50%. That claim is so massive that I, I personally, as somebody who is respect respective of the Nike uh, sports science lab, that was pretty, that's scary. That's disappointing to go, I hope you know something I don't because just based on your abstract, you cannot make that claim. And si talking to Simon Bartle, he seemed to believe that there was something else going on. So I'm, I'm hopeful that potentially there is, but I was disappointed. Yeah. I, I, think like, I think like Craig says, we all assume there must be some stuff they know that we don't because I hope. Making, making the claims that were made off the back of the things we've seen feels like a bit of a jump. And it's you know, reassuring right. to me to hear you say you, you hated it because I wanted to love this shoe. And I yeah. thought I was gonna, I thought I was gonna love it because I loved the Epic React. I love, the, I love React foam. And to me, right. this, this, felt like, this felt like one of my kids had left a bit of Lego in the medial <laughs> arch of my epic react that is exactly yeah. what it was like this is my epic react with a bit of lego in it and it was it's, oh this, no it's 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 this medial you know this this clip i think they call yeah. it here just where this ends oh. here just really really digs into my medial longitudinal arch um and i've spoken to a lot of people that said the same thing they just did not find that area comfortable when i do see people online that that you know swoop in to get this shoe when there's a sale at nike because they love it i'm like what do you love that what are you seeing that i don't um i want to love this shoe i love react foam but yeah i'm the same i i i've tried to sort of say maybe i should break it in maybe i should make but like that's kind of i don't i've don't i haven't bought a shoe recently that i've had to break in shoes feel most shoes i like feel like slippers from yep. you know minute one and this yep. never did and i thought maybe i'll forget that that bit of lego's there i have never you know i've put 100k on them to really give it a chance um and they are kind of just on the shelf now for sure so how how similar does that clip feel to like the guide rails in some of the brooks like gts is it similar at all? It look visually, it looks similar. I haven't worn either, actually. So, um, 
I've not I, worn the guide. I've not worn the adrenaline or, any, or the, the new guide rail. So I'll let um, I'll let um, Matt, yeah, or you've David, done both. Matt, Matt or David answer that one. Yeah, it's the the ones on the Infinity Rack feel like oh, a hard plastic that's sticking into your foot. The guide rails on something like the Adrenaline feel like it's integrated into the shoe, where I don't notice the guide rails themselves, but I notice what they're trying to do to my foot very gently. So it's basically one of them, the Brooks seems to have integrated them very well, and that 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 shoe is still a moderate to high stability shoe, or it's going to be different than it was in the past before that. So those people who have been wearing like the 15, 16, 17, you have to know that the adrenaline design is much different. It still provides a high level of stability. It's just different. Whereas I found the the clips in the Infinity Rack just to be like hard plastic, which probably means they're going to work very well for people who don't need stability, right? But for those who do or those who are sensitive to that stuff, they may have an issue. And there are plenty of people who have, you know, very stiff neutral mechanics and you put any additional stuff there and they it irritates something there's other people who are super <laughs> stiff who love it it's just going to depend it's, i'm not side surprised note, a large portion of people want that shoe. side yeah. note david i think you should go into hand modeling with your showing of the uh, <laughs> adrenaline there oh that yeah pretty nice that was, that was nice i'm doing it with the mirror image too i'm like yeah. my pretty good. Right? Magi like, magician's I'm assistant like, uh, level that was <laughs> superb okay the camera cool. got inverted on me I feel actually like i'm I'm, I'm glad to say that the adrenaline has been mentioned because that's the only shoe I actually have here with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I have two shoes, but that's one of them. But, it, but interestingly, that is my go-to shoe. I've got a pile of shoes sitting in front of me and I go for a run. That's the one I just I grab. It's the one I want to run in. We can definitely, um, in, in the mm. quick fire later, Craig, we'll be talking yeah. about your your, ho your your hooves and what they like. Don't worry about that. Well, yeah, um, no, don't, forget, don't forget those. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> 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 it's a horror show it's a horror show i feel like we i feel like we've trashed trashed the infinity we act just enough to make our point and not quite enough for nike's lawyers to hunt us down so we'll move on super quick and we're going to move into no uh, well, i should say that i'm i appreciate that they are starting to think but i think they need they, they need to be careful about what they say and how they say it yeah because people consumers don't always know the difference and that might get them in the hot water so I mean, yeah. Viber made some pretty close, like like more subtle claims than that, and they got sued. So I'd be again when you make claims like that, you better have great data to follow it up, or you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, mm -hmm. great data, all great lawyers, all great lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the um, let's talk about the endorphin range. Um, I've got the speed here. Looks like Nathan. Looks like you guys. Are, oh, you got the shift and the pro there. Uh, so between us, we got all three. Um, this is obviously the mutant colorway. I think some of the, the colorways they've recently bought out are, are just way, way better. I can't wait to get my hands on some of them. Um, this range is super, super interesting to me. Like, uh, I, 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 it's, I'll be honest. I don't have a massive pedigree with Saucony shoes. Um, they're not they're not shoes I've always loved, always reached for. Um, but as far as let's talk about the pro first and nathan will come to you because you're on screen holding it up yeah you know the pro was sort of released as the um I th i'm sure I, I read one person comment on it being the the vaporfly killer you know because the vaporfly was dominating and this was their stiff carbon plate racing shoe aggressive rocker um talk talk to us about the pro your, your experience with it your thoughts on it yeah um i'll just start with kind of personal experience with it and um and not go into too much of this you know science or whatever behind it but i've this has just been a shoe that i've really had a pleasure running in um and just the combination of, of the the bounciness of the foam it just feels effortless running i feel like for me when i go out in this shoe i just get into my rhythm and it just it's effortless is what it feels like it doesn't feel like there's anything that's pushing me one way or another or trying to drive me too fast forward like some of these racing shoes with really big like toe springs or rockers make you feel like you have to run really, really fast. Um, whereas this one let me fall back into some like marathon, even like longer than like longer run pace in them, uh, which was really fun to do. And uh, I just felt like my legs weren't beat up like they usually do after long runs. Like if I would do some half marathons or whatever in this, in the shoe. So they're just super fun. Um, they do have the rocker. That's what they call their speed roll technology is the design of the midsole. Um, 
and you can kind of just see the design of the rocker within the foam here. And they have their, their plate follows this kind of S curve through um, where it kind of starts higher and dips lower into the, into the uh, meat of the midsole, but um, just really enjoyable, really enjoyable, really uh, light uh, on top where it, it does lock you down, but there's enough room and aeration in the foot that, that it just makes it fit a lot of, I feel like it fits a lot of different kinds of feet because there's enough volume in the forefoot. Um, not just width, but kind of the whole encompassing without it being stretchy because it's kind of this minimal upper. So, yeah, I, I love this shoe. Cool. Uh, what's, your, what's your? You must get some. You must get some rainfall in Wisconsin. I'm guessing maybe yeah, you know, similar to what we do in, in England. Oh, yeah. um, what's your experience with that shoe in the wet? Um, yeah, have you I, had any, any problems with it? I did not. Um, I remember one day in particular, I took it out. Um, I took it out for a like a 10k tempo. And so I was trying to bring it down to like my 5k, 10k pace and it was raining that day. And I even was doing Hills. Um, the, it's one of my favorite roads in Stevens point here, but I was going down some Hills and it has some turns on that, like steeper turns on that road actually, or sharper turns on that road. And I, I didn't have any issues, um, with, with traction with this one. Did you have, did you notice things differently? I've definitely felt a little bit slip, slippery, slippery, uh, in it huh. than I, than I would probably like, but I, I run a much slower pace than, than all of you guys, I should add. So let, maybe that comes into it. My contact times are probably horribly long. Um, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's move on to the, the speed. Um, and I, I've got real, a real affinity for this shoe. I feel like this shoe is, is, you know, if, if I'm going away, if I, well, pre-pandemic, if I was going away for a, for a week and I was packing light and I had a few different sessions planned and I could only take one shoe, for me at least, this feels like the shoe I'd probably reach for. It feels like the shoe that can, can be a little bit of everything. Um, David, have you had much, uh, much, much time, much mileage in the speed? I have, yeah. It's actually in behind my door there. I should have brought it in. <laughs> but <laughs> I have the pro here. <laughs> I actually, I think I probably like the speed more than the other two here. Um, for them, it was a little unstable. They can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I don't really need too much stability. I find that I like it really well for the long runs and just for that protection on my feet. I actually have done a full marathon in the endorphin speed when we were testing the shoe and I was fine the next day. Like I just, I mean, I wasn't blasting it out like, a race pace or anything, but it was just <laughs> just a casual two forty seven. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not even gonna ask. I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> Infuriating. <laughs> but I, I do that. I've done several workouts in the endorphin speed. I did a long run the other day, and I closed out the last like three miles really hard in it. So the shoe can go fast and it can go slow, and I think that's. I feel like it's the best in that middle range though. For me, like a very controlled effort where I'm still moving, but I'm not exactly pushing would probably be right around that 610 range, like 610 to 620 per mile. And that's where it feels like really, really nice. And so like, I could just block, I could just do that for a long, long time in that shoe. I feel like it does lose a little bit of responsiveness going down into those more 5k, 10k kind of ranges. I wouldn't want to race in it. Um, but I also like that very responsive, stiff forefoot, that almost explosive feeling that you would get out of the pro or the alpha fly or something like that. Um, but it's still a really, really good shoe. I, I do really like the endorphin speed. Yeah. Um, it's funny it, hearing hearing you say that you, you're a big fan of it because you like the, the softness compared to the other two. It's really interesting having read a lot of your guys' blogs and watched every single one of your YouTube videos. I've definitely found that, that the shoe, you know, when you've listened to reviewers and you think, I think this reviewer likes all the things that I like, you just seem to find that, and, and I, I've certainly read someone online recently saying, what's the point of even having shoe reviewers? Because shoe, shoe fit and comfort and shoe wear is so personal, which of course I agree with. But at the same time, when you can find a reviewer that you think, you know, speed aside, I, I suspect um, we differ significantly there. I know we do, but it seems like whatever you like on your feet, I seem to quite like on my feet as well. So you know, I think if you can find a reviewer that likes the things you like, then the, when a brand new shoe comes out, that's the first review you go to and say, okay, yeah. what do they think? What do they feel about it? I think that's a really, really valuable thing. Um, Matt, it, it seems like you don't like things that are too compliant. You, you like something a bit firmer just from kind of the things we've had before. Have you, yeah. the shift, I, the shift, is the only, uh, I've, I've got the pro, I've got the speed. I don't have the shift. I've not put the shift on. 
from what I've read, it's the most stable of the gang, of the, of the family. Is that true? It certainly is. Again, no traditional stability elements, but certainly a wide platform, uh, some reinforcements on the medial side. I love this heel cup. It's not really, a, I wouldn't call it a counter per se, but like, because it's more external. But it, uh, this shoe is a great up-tempo trainer or maximalist trainer for those who let's say that they, they're used to training in the speed or or they use the pro but want something just a little bit more there but still have the option to go a little quicker. The Shift is a wonderful shoe to be able to do that. Again, it's not a stability shoe. It's more of your kind of structured maximalist trainer. And I love it. I love the upper. The upper is extremely comfortable. I feel like that is, is one of the things that was missed about this, the endorphin line, was how incredible the uppers are where they didn't have to have incredibly stiff heel counters, which I can be very sensitive to. They created these very secure, but lightweight, breathable uppers. And I think the shift does a great job of providing that. Like I've done, you know, 20 mile long runs where I've run up Glendora Mountain Road for those in Southern California, you know what that is, where I've run up that and then hammered the whole way down. It's 10 miles downhill um, with a significant elevation change and been totally fine afterwards, even though this is not the, the, uh, PB foam. I like it. It's a great mileage shoe. Uh, for those who don't want, let's say, a max, because a lot of maximal shoes can be a little sluggish. This one is not. This one can still move. So it's, it's part of the endorphin line. It's going to move. So I, I really have enjoyed this shoe. Yeah. I feel like uh, that's one of those shoes that has been a little bit polarizing for people in terms of, yeah. you know, I, I wish that the that the um, shift was a little bit more compliant, but I, I was with Matt and enjoying enjoying the ride there it's not like a plot along kind of shoe it's a you got to be wanting to to put in at least some kind of an effort into the run um so yeah i like that shoe a lot i did find that the warm-up was not the most comfortable in this shoe like that first mile half mile you know it's 4 30 5 o'clock in the morning i'm trying to wake myself up it, it's not the most comfortable thing but as soon as you get into groove it just shines it again it's it's meant to go. It's not meant to be a plotter. It's meant to go normal or up tempo paces, but still get plenty of protection. Yeah, uh, I think. A, so I was just going to say just a question here from Kevin. How does the Endorphin Pro compare to the Nike Vaporfly, Alphafly, and Feel? You don't want to take that. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I will. I, I think David actually should take it for Alphafly though. Uh, yeah, we're going to come on to the Alpha Fly's the next shoe up. So don't talk about the Alpha Fly too much, though. I know you. I know this is you know. I, I saw your last episode. Uh, I know how uh -huh. you feel about this shoe. Um, <laughs> yeah, David, you take it because like Kevin. Kevin in his day was his marathon times were very very similar to yours. Um, so I feel like uh, you're the best person to answer this for him. Okay. Um, well, if I'm just gonna oversimplify it, like just a very quick general comparison, I would just say that the Endorphin Pro relies a little bit more on that speed roll technology of that roll and that rocker, and that ex and the responsiveness will come from the combination of that and that carbon plate where it's kind of propelling you off. Whereas the Alpha Fly is almost on the other extreme, where it's very soft and compliant. Whoops, you just... David just froze on Oops, us. David, David just froze on us. Oh. Uh -oh. Midway, midway through talking about his absolute favorite shoe as well. <laughs> I, heard, I heard David say in one of our other times, we, we did compare these on another episode once, and he talked about like a mini trampoline versus a big trampoline, where you get kind of a little bounce from the, um, from the pro, and you get this kind of like big bounding effect from, uh, from the Alpha Fly. Yeah, which is which for some people can be challenging because the Alpha Fly the, that foam yeah, is very it gives quite right a bit. Yeah. So while there's a lot of rebound, it's also not the most stable. So you're going to get a lot of bounce, but you better make sure you have stable mechanics mm -hmm. to really utilize that shoe well. Whereas the Pro is much more, as I've said a million times, much more stable. The speed roll really keeps your efficiency forward. So I feel like it's a much more efficient shoe, and will probably work for a very different population. I can't say one is better than the other one for everyone. It's just a different shoe that's going to work better for a different population. Like for me, yeah. the Pro works a lot better than the Alpha the Vaporfly. David, sorry, we sorry about that, David. We 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 lost you there. Basically, Nathan and it's Matt okay. told Nathan and Matt told us beforehand if you start going on about the Alpha Fly too much, just pull <laughs> plug with a plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why they, um, we actually cut you out. 
let's uh, let's let's come let's come back to you and let's let's get stuck straight into um i've got a different colorway here but let's get stuck straight into yeah. the alpha fly because this was the, the the talk of the year they were like honestly getting hold of it in the uk um that first colorway the black and green one was getting hold of that was it was like finding rocking horse poo it was it was ridiculous oh, um this one was a little bit easier the mango one they've now got the mango one out as well and it's getting a bit easier to get hold of but this is the big one because We'll, we'll come on to talk about our next shoe in a minute, which has been a bit of a record breaker in recent weeks. But this was the one that, that had all the controversy because everyone was breaking records and uh, people were either loving it or they were very upset by it. It was, it, was, um, it was likened to, at one point I heard it likened to performance enhancing drugs. You know, we, we know all the kind of stuff that's going, going on with this shoe. We can't talk about shoes in 2020 and not talk about the Alpha Fly. So, yeah. Um, Go on, you, you you take the reins. It's your shoe. We'll interrupt you if you get if you if we yeah. can't stop. I'll just start by saying, ask Kenanisa Bekele if it's performance enhancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shots fired! <laughs> no, no, I love Kenanisa Bekele, by the way, and I and I like the Alpha Fly, but it's not a shoe for everyone. That's my point. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't think it's performance enhancing necessarily, but I do think it's very protective, and so. If you are light on your feet, Chogate and Galen Rupp are the two guys that come to my mind for like the ideal gait pattern. And this is like quote unquote ideal. This is obviously arbitrary, but the way they land and move through their gait cycle, they are very smooth and like almost perfectly where that hoof begins. And if they fall back slightly when they're tired, it's not that big of a deal. And so you see someone with those two guys specifically, they look so beautiful, just like, like just every single stride is right underneath them. Very good, very smooth cadence. You look at someone <laughs> like the Kale and his stride pattern's a little bit on the quicker side, a little bit of a shorter turnover. And I think he just responds better to the next percent a little bit more. But the shoe's very, very bouncy and very responsive. And I do feel like it elongates your stride a little more um, than some people might like. And so the, I, in my review, I said the same thing. The shoe is one of the most responsive things I've ever put on my feet, if not the most. But you have to be able to control that motion. If you don't control it, that you end up just kind of losing your own legs, and you might even slow down, which I think some people are finding, and that they they go back to the next percent or the vapor fly or the endorphin pro, and the alpha fly is kind of almost more of a second choice depending on the distance or on the runner. Um, but I mean, I really like it. I I do tend to land in that region a little bit more, and I do have a little bit more of a longer flowy stride. So I just I just kind of like getting to that rhythm and that cadence. And I like that it feels like it pushes me a little bit more. I like that feeling when I go fast. But I, I don't work out in this shoe. I literally only do strides and races in it. I, I don't like that feeling when I'm trying to keep things under control. <laughs> so in terms of like a controlled workout effort, I mean, this is definitely a special day type of shoe for me. Um, yeah. One of the things yeah. I, I noticed when I first wore it at a much slower pace than you um, was just how my legs felt the next day in that I didn't feel them at all. You know, it was a certain session that, that I know in other shoes I'd wake up and I'd probably just, you know, because I'm 42, I'd walk to the to the toilet first thing in the morning and my calves would probably just let me know that I'd, I'd, I'd done some intervals the day before. And I woke up and I was like, I feel like I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like I didn't work out yesterday. Like, I don't know if that's uh, anyone else's experience at the quicker paces you guys run or whether that's just my le level of conditioning. But uh, for me, it felt like, wow, I, I, I can understand why people feel like they, they can recover quicker after wearing this shoe. Is that, is that your guys' experience? Yeah, and I think that's actually why I raced in it those last two 5Ks. I think Nathan thinks I love this shoe a lot more than I think I love this shoe. <laughs> But <laughs> they made fun of him a lot. Because <laughs> both of those five Ks, I had big training weeks going into it, and I was feeling very fatigued and tired. And so for me, I was actually like on the last one, I was going between the Razor Elite and the Alpha Fly. Um, let me grab the Razor Elite. That's just the Skechers Razor Elite. Um, two completely different shoes. This is five ounces, still plated, but this one's eight ounces. But I can go probably a little quicker in the Razor Elite, but I wanted the impact protection and my legs feeling a little bit more fresh in that third mile. So I chose the Alpha Fly. But if I was going 
fresh and fast and in a group where this is going to be a really fast 5k, I'm probably going to opt for something else. I'm probably not going to race in the alpha fly for that short of a distance. But I've had the same experience where you just, you feel like you recover a lot better. You feel a lot fresher at the end of the run in the race. And afterwards you don't feel as beat up as well. And the same thing in the endorphin pro, I think they did a good job with that as well. There were strong rumors that you turn up to races with two, three pairs of shoes, allegedly having not made your mind up what you're going to wear. And the other two boys are like, he's going to wear the alpha fly. And 100% of, of the time you wear the alpha fly. Um, and it's happening again. It's happening again uh, tomorrow. I think. I, I'm calling it for tomorrow. I call it <laughs> alpha fly. All, all bets are off. All bets are off. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, segue from the alpha fly that that, that that sort of got all of the 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 plaudits for you know a lot of the world records that fell in the in the sort of second quarter of the year and sort of during that pandemic and when racing started again and then let's move on to this chap um which in the last um again we've got slightly different colorways here but in the last uh i guess three weeks at valencia it pretty much destroyed the field uh, not it's the the, you know, the athletes wearing it of course um, <laughs> but you know let's not let's not forget those um but all of a sudden, I remember all of the, I remember going back six months to everyone saying this is unfair and it's unfair and this needs that the Alpha Fly needs to be banned because unless you're a Nike athlete, you've got no chance whatsoever. And every race, it was like, well, were they wearing the Alpha Fly? Were they wearing the next percent? And then Valencia came along, and and the um, for those that don't know, I'm sure most people do. This is the Adi Zero Adios Pro, um, and all of a sudden after that everyone changed their tune a bit and everyone was like, oh, well now if you're not an Adidas or, or a Nike athlete, it's not fair. Or, and you're just like, oh God, come on. Um, now I'll be honest, uh, when I, when I put this on, it immediately felt like this is, this is my shoe. Cause my, my, my absolute jam has always been the Boston, the Adidas Boston boost. That is kind of my, my first love. And this just felt like a, like a Boston boost that had had some steroids just injected into the midsole. And it just, just felt so, so good. A bit slippery on, on, on the wet ground for me at least. But um, Nathan, have you had much time in this shoe? Nope. So Matt, again, Matt's the only one who's done that. He, uh, he, he, he went deep and dove into it to get it himself. So he's the only one who's got time in it. I do have thoughts on the design we cool. can get into Let, later. Let's talk but... about, yeah, let's talk about Matt's time and then let's, yeah. uh, in experience and let's come back to you for your, your yeah. thoughts. So I went to great lengths to get this shoe before it was officially released. And I was hoping for a Nike, or not a Nike, Adidas <laughs> contact. That backfired heavily on me when I took a dump on some of the designs. I do have to say the upper is one of my favorite uh, racing uppers. This thing, the, the mobility of it, I don't know if people all know that there are multiple lace holes. You can adjust this any way you want. I really like the upper. It's, it's a great fit. It tends to work very well. If you have a wider foot, you can stung it down. You have a narrow foot. I really like that. The sole, it doesn't feel like the Alpha Fly or Vaporfly. Light Strike Pro feels different. When I run in this shoe, it doesn't feel like I'm cheating. I still have to really work on it. I did like the way that they set up the plate versus the rods, where the plate in the back definitely acts for those of you who might need a little stability. Definitely worked very well for me. Who Those who tend to rock, who invert a little bit more, especially the heel, this thing is pretty majorly beveled. So it's nice and smooth, but you'll be pitched out a little bit. I I did not like the way this, this toe spring was designed. I think for a elite runner that's moving at a very fast pace, it's going to be fair to transition over that so quickly. For But for anybody below that, I think the problem is this is way too aggressive. And I sent this photo to a friend of mine, uh, Jeffrey Gray over it. He's going, hey, what do you think of this? And he said the exact same thing I felt was, it is way too aggressive. It the, the the rods are way too stiff, and the toe spring is too late for your average runner. For an elite runner, it's going to be great, right? And we know from the literature that different people respond differently to sole stiffness. So I think it's great, and I'm not surprised to see the shoe breaking records. But I think it's for a dis different reason to be able to use those plates rather than the foam. It's still a great. It's still a fun shoe. Um, I'll be totally honest. I spent four hundred dollars. Um, on a website to get this early and was disappointed and will never do that again. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this off some people at Adidas and have thoroughly killed that contact for us forever. I'm like, Nathan's a magician at this, so maybe he can fix this, but I think I killed I mean, that. But yeah, it's just, there's some components know, that have to be worked on. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what a shoe would have to do to impress me if I'd spent $400 on it, though, in fairness. <laughs> that's a, that's a high yeah, bar, I cried it? when I ran in it the first time. I'm like, that was, this is, I should not have done this. I should have been patient, I should have waited. 
it would, I mean, have, to gro- it would have to do your grocery shopping for you or something. <laughs> um, Nathan, let's come to you and talk a bit about the, the design as someone who's not worn it, and, you know, with your sort of more sort of uh, biomechanical clinical hat on. Yeah, so this is totally cerebral stuff, no experience in the shoe itself. But um, I think what I appreciate about the design, and we're, we're starting to see a couple things in shoe design also going this this route, but using... For those who aren't familiar, Matt referenced that there's the there's kind of a, a carbon fiber plate through the heel, but then it changes into these rods where there's <clears throat> I believe there's five rods that run up through the yeah. forefoot. And I think what I appreciate about that is it provides the level of stiffness that the shoe needs um, for kind of balancing out some of the soft foam that's under there. But it allows for decoupling, potentially, I mean, I haven't ran in it, but it allows for decoupling of it as you roll through your toe. So if you're somebody who's rolling a little bit more on the inside or medial side of the foot versus the outside, those rods might be able to adapt in that direction, in kind of that medial lateral direction to allow it to be comfortable for a couple different types of runners. Um, instead of having a plate that's going to be acting as one unit through the whole thing, they're dissociated with one another. Um, you can kind of think about for anybody who's ran a Newton, you know, they have their lugs that they use in the forefoots and they have, you know, to have them act a little bit independently. Um, and I do, I do appreciate that difference, uh, between all the other, um, plated shoes. Although, you know, I think now that I say that, um, I think the rocket act or carbon, the um, Carbon X has um, kind of a cut in it for the the first ray as well, um, and so I, I just appreciate that decoupling aspect for the flexibility in the forefoot for it to act a little bit differently for who the runner is. Yeah, and certainly if you're out there thinking, oh, I'm not an elite runner, well, based on what Matt <clears> said, <throat> maybe maybe I shouldn't get it. I'm not an elite runner. I love. It. I think if you love the Boston Boost give this a go. I think this is my favorite of all the carbon plated shoes I have. It's, it's right up there, right up there. Um, but your points are very well made, Matt, for sure. Um, also, I did have- also, I did have to say, I did enjoy it. for, for anything running long and trying to run up tempo. It's one of my, it's, it's a favorite. I've continued to use it, which is why I'm not going to show you what the left lateral heel looks like and why I want to send these to David. He'll probably send them right back to me. Um, so I do have a good number of miles, but for like up tempo running, like if you're doing a steady state or something like that, it, the efficiency is great. So I'm not surprised to see that records are broken. I don't think the shoe is making them run faster. I think it's helping them maintain a pace longer. Yeah. Based on the, uh, the, the, the plate design, but I'm curious to know what, how you, how you liked it. You said it's one of your favorites. Right up there. Like it, yeah. you know, when you're constantly trying to recalibrate your list, aren't you? And you're trying to sort of slide there. You're giving it way too much time and way too much thought, if we're being honest. But it is, it is right up there. And I know that we'll probably talk about 2021 towards the end of this pod, but um, they're bringing out the, they're bringing out two more models of it, you know, quarter two, 21, or at least that's the rumor, the, the uh, Adios Pro 2 and the Adios Pro X, I think. So it's heartbreaking to hear that you've completely crushed your, uh, your contacts there. Um, and also they're bringing out i've seen i've certainly seen a picture of the the boston 10 which yeah, actually, looks, actually yeah. looks like like it's uh it, it's it's got a much thicker sort of higher stack it so, looks like um, the uh the the sister of the endorphin speed to the pro looks like exactly. what the boston is yeah yeah. yeah yeah so as an adidas fan and they've always just like i say they've always just fit my feet well next year is is potentially a very very exciting year but i know that it's not you to come to to get hooked up matt that's good to know um <laughs> Any- I also love the Boston, by the way. I'm all, I am also an undercover Adidas fan. So again, hence why I spent that much money. Had to believe. Yeah. You have to be a fan. You have to be a fan. They're the only shoes it sounds like you have to pay for anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a couple. So let's, let's, let's do some, um, just look at the time. Let's do some quick fire questions just for you three guys. So these are very, you know, just, just, just your, um, you know, I've not, I've not primed you. You don't know what's coming. Just the first thing that comes to mind, I say no right or wrong answers, purely opinion based. And just the way you're on my screen is Nathan, uh, Matt, David. So I'll just go in that order. So we'll go Nathan first, then Matt, then David. Uh, first question, one shoe of all the shoes released in 2020, Nathan, top for you, your favorite shoe of 2020. Mine was Endorphin Pro. Endorphin Pro, Matt. Yep. I don't. I I don't know if I could say I have a favorite. To be honest, come on, a lot of good gotta... I have to do it. I don't know if I can pull that bandaid off. <laughs> do it. Give us a shake. It's been a good year. We know this. 
Oh, is, oh, is, is, is that the Kayano? Ky- Actually, I knew it was the Kayano light for you because I saw yeah, the last episode. Yeah, we'll come we'll come back to that in a second. I already know the answer, uh, David. Dare I ask? Hang it, hold it up. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> It's just the alpha fly, really, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. It's, it's Christmas in, well, uh, six days' time, at least everywhere here except London, where they've just cancelled it, sadly. But uh, let's assume Christmas morning you come down, you can choose one pair of shoes that are under <coughs> your tree for you. Any pair of shoes from 2020 that are under your tree. Nathan? Mm, that, I don't, that I don't have? Yeah, it's probably a reasonable way to, to to frame it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I would I would put the uh, Adios Pro as as what I'd want to see under there. Great choice. Yep. Matt. It it has to have come out in 2020. Yeah, I mean, technically, this is a 2020 podcast, but you know, no one's going to call us on it. So just, <laughs> just say whatever, say whatever you want. <laughs> let me let me just say that I well, technically, I actually have a pair. I can't say what it is, but I can tell you that I want another one and it'll be coming 2021, probably first quarter. I want another one. But if well, I had to... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that is, but I want a pair now. <laughs> no, definitely, Craig. No, it's not. <laughs> no offense to Hoka. I have a feeling somebody's going to... I, I honestly... I would love to see what the finalized version. I would love to have a pair of those yellow Audios Pro as well. Yeah, I do like that, the shoe. You want to see so that sharp. Color. That color yeah. is just absolute fire, isn't it? It is. I, yeah. I, I have a I have a pair of the original Audios uh, in that yellow color, that highly yeah. Gibber Sasa colorway, and it is still one of my favorites. Version two was my absolute favorite. It is one of my favorite racing flats ever. Uh, so, David, was, David, what's under the Christmas tree? Oh man! Another pair of alpha, <laughs> another pair of alpha fly. Yeah, probably. No, no, no. In yeah, mango, no, mango. I'm, I'm a three stripes guy, but I'm actually. Uh, I would probably say the Audios Pro, but I've really, really wanted to run in the Takumi Sens, the new Takumi Sens, and also, yeah, and that's out. And then the other one for that 2021 early quarter, the Carbon X2 which people are running around in right now. Mm. And I, I'm really, really mm. interested in it. Mm. So any one of those three, I'd be delighted. Cool. Craig, what would be under your tree? Another pair of adrenaline or another pair of... Um, no, I, I I would go with what David said, the, the Carbon X2. I've, I've um, got the one. and But I did, and I think I sent you a link to this, it was a YouTube video in which someone went through the, their best plated shoes of the year. And I'd be interested to see what the others think about this. They put the Hocker carbon plate as a good training shoe, as the best plated mm-hmm. shoe of the year. And and they put the other shoes more into marathon, half marathon, 10K shoes. Yeah, but they looked at the Hocker carbon plate as, as a good training shoe, mm-hmm. if you're into carbon plates. So I don't know how others feel about that. <laughs> Is that, are you talking about the, the current Rocket X or the, uh, the Carbon X? No, the, the Rocket X, yeah. I would agree with that. That shoe is, it's a great shoe. It was very comfortable, stiff, but I found it more enjoyable for up-tempo efforts and even using as a lighter weight, stiff uh, trainer, personally, yeah. for my for my mechanics. I do like super light shoes. So I, I, I would actually agree with that. If you are faster and more aggressive, I can certainly see being able to do some, some uh, pretty nasty things with that shoe. A nasty meaning a good way. Like <laughs> nasty, you know, in, nasty in a, in a cool way. Um, so, yeah, sort of slightly, slight variation on the que- on the one the one pair of shoes question. You you have to give away every single pair of shoes you own, and you're only allowed to run every session, every race day in one pair of shoes forevermore. You got to do your long runs in it, your tempo runs, your intervals. You got to turn up on race day. Nathan, one shoe forevermore on your foot. Which what is it? Yeah, it's actually going to be. It's it's not a shoe that we talked about in our end of the year that I, I didn't pick it for that. But if that's the if that's the criteria, it's going to be uh mizuna wave rider 24 um which i i've always loved the wave rider it fits i don't need to go into it that's my answer <laughs> <laughs> good good to get some mizuno love if we can't talk about yes. every model but yeah it's good to get, mention mizuno uh matt what's your one shoe forevermore um oh gosh i might from from 2020 uh no no i think we're just we're just we're just gone the rules are out the window now so 
<laughs> it, would, it, it would definitely have to be close to um, what Nathan said, the writer 24. I know I'm not supposed to talk about this, but the writer Neo, we can't review it because it's not it's a non-US shoe, but it, it, that sh I have gotten to try on a pair and it made me go, oh my gosh, I want this, but I don't want to spend $200 on a trainer. Um, from So it'd, be, it'd probably be the, what Nathan said, the writer, which was that they, Mizuno did a great job with the energy. Uh, super excited to see what they come up uh, come out with this next following year but for right now based on i'm gonna have to go with the pro and my reason for this is i've used it for daily training the second i got this when my fiance was running at the olympic trials the day before i ran 20 miles watching her in this shoe had no problem did a hill workout the next day and i've used this for every kind of thing you can imagine so the pro as someone who loves lightweight trainers that would be my my go-to one shoe to do it all I've also awesome. raced a 5K in it. And same question, lastly, to David. What, what's your one shoe of all time, and why is it the Alpha Fly? Well, I mean... Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this next one needs no introduction. It's, uh... <laughs> Just kidding. Ha-ha, <laughs> gotcha. Ah, there we go. Um, Skechers Razor Elite. And my main reasoning, because if we can only have one shoe, that means I have to train in it, too. And I don't want to train in the Alpha Fly. I, yeah. I don't like running slow in it. It feels too mushy, and I feel like I'm sinking into it. I only like it for going fast. But the Razor Elite, I can do both in. It's basically it's the same midsole as the Skechers Razor 3, except it's plated. And then they stripped down the upper into a mono mesh upper, so they got an ounce or so down. It's like 5.4 ounces, I want to say. And the shoe's incredibly light. It's got good gear out, so it'll last just as long as the other Razor, if not longer. And I've gone as high as 14, 15 miles in it. I've run as fast as like 420, 430 mile pace, hitting repeats on the track. I've slowed down and run 520, 530 miles for long tempos in it. It's it's very, very versatile. And if, if I'm gonna have to choose train, race, everything, all the above, I'm going to go with the Razor Elite. Good choice. I'm yeah. surprised well, we're 59 minutes into a podcast with the Doctors <laughs> of Running, and it's the first mention sketches I've had, to be honest. I'm, we, we, you know, we should have had a sweepstake on that. I would have thought their name was going to come up a lot sooner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, about, what, about, what about you, Ian? What shoe would you, you keep? Uh, one shoe forevermore? Mm, yeah. Um, for I'm calling this. <laughs> oh, oh, really? 4% wow. flat. Four percent flying. It's just really? the, it's just the it's the OG. It's just it's like a pair of slippers. It's uh, yeah. I, I just I, I was I was reaching for the Adidas then, and it just there it was, just looking at me, and I was just oh. the other thing is the Nova Blast. This shoe is <laughs> this this shoe is just an absolute workhorse, and I just I keep saying to myself every easy run, pick something different, and then it, it's basically it's the Nova Blast to me is like the Alpha Fly on race day for, for David. It's like I go for one shoe and my hand just finds it, just goes over <laughs> to the Nova Blast. But yeah, I think it would be the the oh no, or would it be the Boston Boost? Ah, oh, yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I've just realised how horrible those questions are. I apologise. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're really difficult. To answer. Answer, yeah, the answer, then, right? <laughs> let's um let's look forward to twenty twenty one. I've already said I'm excited about what what the um the Adi Zero, Adios Pro bring out and also the Boston 10. But you guys probably have got, it sounds like Matt's got loads of cool stuff. He can't even, the stuff you're allowed to tell us, what, what should we be looking forward to in, in 21 that you guys are aware of and that we're all allowed to know about? I think one thing, this isn't a specific shoe. Um, well, this I'm going to show a specific shoe, but what I'm excited about in 2021, it isn't necessarily the shoe. So this is um, the Nimbus Light uh, 2 from ASICS. And I think what this shoe is showing, you know, we were talking to their developers and t they were just talking about how these kind of models allow them to play uh, with new ideas and new shaping and new geometries more than their stable or their staple models because people, they have a following there and they don't want to lose those people. But um, when you, when you hold this shoe in your hand, even just the, you know, the look of the outsole uh, itself, but then when you dive into some of these, you can see the ridge here on the shaping of the midsole. I think what we're going to see in 2021 are all these companies taking what's been learned about in the research regarding midsole geometry and how that can provide um, a platform that allows the foot to do what it wants to do without 
pushing it one way or another. I think we're just going to see this change in what shoes look like because this midsole looks different um, in terms of shaping. You even saw some with the glide ride last year in terms of how the two foams would come together to interact, Kiana Light. Um, so I think ASICs in general um, is definitely playing around with midsole shaping and that excites me for 2021 to see what they're going to do um, and what it feels like and how it ends up cool. performing on the, on the run. David, um, what, what are you looking forward to? Uh, similar as Nathan. So I'm looking forward to how they play with geometry and two companies that I'm actually really excited for about that. One I have in my hand is Saucony. So this is the new Hurricane 23. Um, we are allowed to talk about that, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's out? We did post it's that out. review, so hopefully it's, out, it's not It's out 1-1. One, one. <laughs> it's out 1-1. One, one. Okay, okay. So it is a 2021 shoe, but it's the same thing. You look at the way they contour the midsole and the geometry, and there's all these contours and expansions and flares, and uh, it's just really cool how they played with it. And this shoe, I, I don't really like Max Stability shoes, and I really, really like this shoe. And I think Saucony has been doing a great job with just improving all of their footwear over 2020. And I think they're going to continue to do that over 2021. And I think the other company is Hoka One One. Um, outside of the giant heel flares that they're doing, um, they're also playing around with a lot of geometry and things. And um, I'm just very excited to see some, like, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is an atrocious looking shoe isn't it um oh, oh man yeah it's so I think there's a medical condition named after that shoe right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, help, it helps my name i'm down to run for that i'm pretty sure <laughs> but, um, I'm just kidding. Cool. I, I'm just... yeah there, there's a couple specific models in 2021 that i'm really really looking forward to from hoka and i can't say much about those but we uh, we look forward to reading your we read your reviews in, <laughs> in in due course, um, and like I said at the very start, for those um, who aren't familiar with these guys and their work, we're going to link to all of their podcast and their YouTube channel and their their blog. And I do I do encourage people genuinely to check it out. Um, lastly, uh, Matt, twenty twenty one that you're allowed to talk about what's what's coming, what's what 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 um, floats your boat. I'm I'm really excited for a lot of companies. I think when we talked to ASICs, they made a comment that if if people thought that what they did in 2020 was intense, it's going to be a negative split for them in 2021. And based on the stuff I've seen, that's true, but it's also true for a lot of other companies as well. So ASICs for sure with how they're playing with geometry, how they're doing stability, how they're doing speed. I it's there's some big changes happening. They're paying very close attention to the research. They are really trying some new things that I think are going to take off and change the industry. So it's cool to see ASICs pull ahead. Um, after I, and I, I told them this, I felt like they were kind of sitting in the back and they've really pulled ahead again. So it's very cool to see them being aggressive and people trying things with geometry. I think the other companies that you really need to pay attention to is going to be Mizuno for sure. So what they're doing with the energy and the way they're going to be doing some geometry stuff is already really cool. Like the, you know, the other one that David said he doesn't like stability, like max stability, but he loved the horizon as well. And that was another one. There's That's no post true. in it. it yeah. It's, it's a very interesting take on max stability, just like the Keanu light. So Mizuno is certainly going to be one that pay attention to, and they, they do stay pretty consistent. So if they do something different, you better pay attention. Saucony is the other one pay attention to. I know that they had the big endorphin line, but based on some of the early stuff I've seen, it's like, like whoa, there there might be some really big changes coming down the, the road. And then you always got to, you know, Skechers tends to stay very quiet. And then all of a sudden something comes out of nowhere that pay attention to them. There's some very cool stuff coming um, that integrates a lot of different components, and a lot of things that we've learned over the last couple of years and might try even a few new things. So awesome. 2021 is awesome. going to be exciting. Well, I'm excited. Now I could literally and uh, sit here and talk shoes to you guys all night, uh, but no one wants to listen to that. Um, least of all, my wife in the room next door. So we're going to wrap things up. And uh, yeah, there were so many shoes we didn't get to, um, uh, you know, and that's just the way this 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 is. But um, thank you guys so much for your time. We massively appreciate it. We're big fans of your work. Hopefully we can get some of our audience uh, over and more familiar with your work as well. Thanks for all you do. And thanks for joining us. Oh, we, we okay. appreciate it. Right. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank much. And have a great Thank Christmas. You. Hey, Merry Christmas.